Hi YouTube, I'm back with another knife review. It's been a little while since my last review, but I also have a flashlight review coming. So make sure you do subscribe so you can see when that comes out, and then you'll be able to see when my other videos are released. Um, and I have a multi-tool here, and I have a couple others that I'll be reviewing in the future. So to start, we'll start with the Gerber suspension. Uh, specifically, the model number is 22-01471, and I say that because there's another one that is also called the Gerber Suspension that is, I don't know, it looks a little skinnier and it has some other tools on it, so this is that specific model number. Um, give a couple views before I get into the specs and everything. And I'm not going to have too many like specific specs like uh, blade thickness and stuff like that from a normal knife because multi-tool is not really, not really com comparable to a uh, like a Riot or anything. So this will be a little less like measurement based. But there's a bunch of views of it. So into, I guess, the specs and measurements. The overall length is 3.5 inches closed, so comparable to a normal leather bin or multi-tool. Um, handle thickness is 7 eighths of an inch, and that is out to the outside of these large uh, screws. And the weight is 10.2 ounces on their website, on Gerber's website. And on Blade HQ, they said 9 ounces. So, I mean, it feels pretty heavy, so I'd probably go with the 10.2 ounces and just assume that Gerber is right with the weight, but who knows? Um, you never really know. Uh, blade material, and I guess probably the same material for all of these tools, is steel. Oh. So, I'll show you the blade. There's the plain edge knife blade and there's also a serrated edge knife blade both just steel no idea what kind of steel I'd assume it's not even as good as like 420H or whatever or 440C definitely not as good as that so some kind of mystery Chinese steel uh, handle material is also steel it's just kind of brushed with a titanium color finish is what they call it. So it said titanium finish, but it's really just some sort of painting or coating or something on there. Doesn't look too bad. Gives it kind of a contrast between the tools and hardware. Um, the finish for all the tools, you can kind of see it on the outside of there, and I'll pop open a blade. It's kind of a smoothed, like, blasted finish. And then on some of the tools, like the saw, which is kind of ground down, you have a kind of machine satin from when it was machined or grinded down. Um, it has the safety lock or safety plus lock. Um, saf.t.plus is how they spell it, which is kind of goofy. I don't know what it stands for other than just, I mean, it's a, I'd assume that stands for something specific, but it's just their version of kind of a locking multi-tool. So it kind of just pushes a bar up behind here, I'd assume, that locks up with that 90 degree flat spot back there. So all you do is pull back on the handles. When you pull it back, it releases. Now going over the tools, and as you can see, they open outward, which is nice. Old Leathermans and stuff, you had to open it up to get to the tools. So we can start from this side. You can see the picture right there is the plain edge knife like I showed earlier. Then to get the inside tools, you use this little hook. And there's the flathead screwdriver. A Phillips head screwdriver. Like I showed earlier, you have this saw which I have not used, and I'd assume, I mean, it's not as good as using a real saw for 
like sawing a branch or something, but you can kind of see on the point of the front row of teeth, you can see a burr on every single tooth. There's like a burr that's rolled over, and it's not on the actual tip or anything. It's kind of further down the edge, so I'd assume if you were cutting a branch or something, it would kind of knock all those burrs off, but definitely doesn't show like a super high quality saw or anything if they leave those burrs on there. Um, so that's it for that side, I believe. Yep. And for this side, you can see, got the picture of a serrated knife. So it's got those big kind of, um, not very aggressive serrations, kind of like a bread knife almost. Then we have a, it says there's, okay, so you have a bottle opener down here, and then you have a can opener right here, which I'd assume you could probably use that as a bottle opener anyway, but um, bottle opener, can opener, and I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be, but that's not a very sharp tip for that can opener. I have not used it to open a can, but I don't think that would do too great of a job. I guess if you're out in the woods and you need to open a can and this is the only thing you have, then you could probably get inside the can, but definitely not something you want to go to as your first choice to open a can. Um, next is a little flathead. After that is a lanyard loop, which is a cool little tool to include there. Nice place to put it. So if you're using it, you can pop it out and it locks in and everything. Then the last one is a pair of scissors and you pull it out, it locks, and then you just fold the rest over and it has a little bent metal spring in there. Kind of a different take on the scissors than I've seen on most kind of Victorinox Swiss Army knives and Leathermans and stuff. So cool little design. I think that's all the tools that should be 12. I think five on that side, five on that side, and then you have your pliers and wire cutters. So you have two different rows of teeth on those pliers, like normal needle nose pliers. You have wire cutters, which I wouldn't trust cutting wires with it really. It's not super sharp. It's kind of just two pointed teeth that clamp together inside there. So not great, but like I said about the saw and the can opener, if it's like your only option, then it'll probably get the job done, but definitely shouldn't be your first go-to. Um, and the, uh, they are spring-loaded pliers, so feel nice automatically open and everything. Uh, I think that's it for all the tools. Um, the design, it's very hefty, like I said, 7 eighths of an inch wide, 10.2 uh, ounce. So heavy, hefty, not something I'd carry on my belt or anything or in my pocket. Um, what's nice is the little tool pictures. So it shows you what tools are there. You can see on the bottom there is the saw and on the top is the serrated blade. There's the scissors and the plain edge blade. So it also says which direction to pull to unlock it. Um, it's got thumb studs. I guess it's easier if I close it. But triangular thumb studs that kind of stick out a little bit and they're kind of stepped so that you can grip it a little easier. And like I said earlier, use a little hook kind of like a nail nick, but a little hook in there to grab it. And I just cut my fingernail, so they're a little shorter, and I'm still able to grab most of them. If you, like, bite your fingernails or something, then you might have a hard time, but you can kind of reach up and grab it in different spots if you really need to. Um, and if you, like, if you open up the main blade, then you can reach in there and get it a little easier. Just got to watch out because then you have the blade open. Um... And I said spring-loaded pliers already, so that's kind of all the design elements of it. Um, some of the pros, uh, it's definitely functional. I've used it a lot, 
like I said, I wouldn't carry it in my pocket or on my belt or anything. Um, and it does come with the sheath, like I showed, with a little belt loop and stuff. But I wouldn't carry it like that. I just keep it in my backpack. Um, I've taken apart a couple different things with it. I've used it to um, take apart a fishing reel. So I use both flat heads. Um, maybe the Phillips head and the pliers all in taking apart a fishing reel. Um, I've definitely used it for a couple other things. I've gotten splinters in my fingers before. You can actually see a little spot from like two days ago when I was using it, but had a splinter in my finger and the needle nose pliers are close enough together at the tip. I probably won't be able to zoom in on that, but yeah, there you can see. They are close enough together at that tip where you can grab a splinter if you need to. So definitely functional. Um, the open out tools is a nice design. So you don't have to open it up every time like you used to have to for all the old Leathermans. So you just slide it open. It locks, which is nice for a Leatherman. And then you just unlock it and close it. Um, it's cheap. Um, I think... Around thirty to forty dollars is the normal price for these. So, as far as Leathermans go, there's a lot of like really nice or multi tools, but really nice Gerber and Le Leatherman that are in like the seventies or eighties. And if you're not going to carry it every day and use it, then um, a little thirty dollar option like this would be pretty good to go with if you're not using it every day. Um, I've seen people said they keep it in their toolbox or they keep it in their truck or something and I keep mine in my work backpack that I take to work every day so I'm not using it every day but it's there if I need it and I don't really notice it because I'm carrying a whole backpack full of stuff so I'm not going to notice the 10.2 ounce of this added on to all that um, cons is mystery metal no idea what it's made out of the outside the inside the pliers you can see even right there on the back of the pliers all those little bumps so the pliers are cast. Um, no idea what they're cast out of, but um, really no clue on the steel. Like I said, just some Chinese steel that Gerber uses on all their cheap stuff. So who knows how long the blades will last, how long that saw would last if you're cutting stuff with it. Um, should be easy to sharpen because it's definitely pretty soft, but... Um, probably won't take an edge or, or probably won't hold an edge for very long. Um, the tools, some of them are tough to open. Like I said, if you bite your fingernails or something, you won't be able to get to these as easy. Um, and also the thumb studs are kind of pointy. They have hot spots on them and they're also like not very easy to open. So compared to a normal knife where you can, I mean, just grab a thumb stud and flip it open. I can't, I don't think I can flip that really. Yeah. Kind of stiff, kind of pointy, digs into your fingers. Same with these, they dig into your fingers. So a lot of hot spots really all over this thing. When it's open like this, there I don't feel too much. That's nice and smooth, but closed, using it for a knife or something else, then you're definitely feeling all those little hot spots. Like, let's see if I can zoom in on it. You got the back of that lock right there. That's really pointy. So that's kind of annoying. Definitely not the most comfortable Leatherman multi-tool type thing. But um, like I said, it's not something I use every day. If it's something you're going to use a lot, I might watch out about it. Maybe maybe wear some like work gloves or something like gardening gloves or welding gloves if you're going to use it a lot. Because... If you're using it for more than just a couple little tasks, then you're probably going to get some blisters or something from using this lock because it's not very easy to operate. Um, so, final ruling on this. Um, for being cheap, I'd say it's a really nice multi-tool. Um, $30 to $40. It's definitely good enough um, for that price. Uh, like I said, it's functional. I've used it a lot bunch of different things splinters taking stuff apart the the screwdrivers the flatheads and stuff they all work great so haven't cut too many things with it just little stuff nothing really no hard jobs really so 
Um, not 100% sure on how well they'd perform over time. Like I said, the steel's not great, but for the price, definitely usable. I mean, if you if you have this in your toolbox or your uh, truck or something, then you've probably got a real knife on you also that you can use for cutting stuff that's whatever, a little harder to cut through. Um, it's too heavy to carry, so like I said, truck, toolbox, something like that. I wouldn't recommend carrying it in your pocket because really is just a big chunk of metal and uh, it really is just like a mini toolbox for your backpack or your car definitely usable could be a good gift or something so I like it I didn't buy it I got it as a gift and I definitely liked this as a gift so I probably wouldn't have bought it for myself but I like it I use it I'd recommend it and don't forget to check out the other videos on my channel. Like I said, I have a flashlight light review coming soon too. So check that out and subscribe so you can see my future videos. And don't forget to like. Thanks for watching.